Here is a schematic drawing of a diaphragm pump which is pneumatically operated. You can call it as a Wilden pump as Wilden is the prime manufacturer of such diaphragm pumps. On boat ships, the typical use of such pumps are mainly for emergency purpose. Like you can find one such pump in the soap up locker where you can easily transfer it and use it anywhere you want to pump an emergency. Some ships have such pumps fixed in the engine room approved by the class for sludge and bilge pumping etc. However, majority of the ships use it for the portable pumping means. Now the idea of this video is not just to explain the operation of Wilden pump which everybody know but the main purpose is to concentrate on this unit that's the air distribution unit and understand the complete working of the Wilden pump. We all know air is being delivered on either side of the diaphragm so that the pumping action happens but do we really understand the air distribution unit? In this video we will address that and completely understand so that when there is a trouble in it we need not call our senior engineers we can solve it ourselves. Alright so to proceed further we have to understand the basic components and parts. Here is the central rod which houses a plate on either side in between there is the rubber diaphragm which is the main component for the pumping action and here is the suction line within which the oil or any liquid is being sucked on the suction manifold and then the pumping action happens at these chambers and then here are the discharge valves it goes to the discharge line so that's the simple arrangement now going little bit further through the air distribution unit air is distributed to the back side of the diaphragm alternatively on either side of the diaphragms so let's assume that the air is being pushed into this unit the diaphragm moves out so that the other side of the diaphragm moves in creating suction and here the discharge happens as the diaphragm pushes the fluid out. Here you can note the balls four in number which act as valves and here are the valve stoppers. Here is the valve seat. So when the air stops going behind this diaphragm now the air is alternatively diverted behind this diaphragm. So this diaphragm moves out pushing the liquid out to the discharge manifold and this diaphragm moves in so that it creates suction pulling in or sucking the fluid from the tank or let's say some through the pipeline. Now the main point over here is how does the air gets diverted to either side of the diaphragm alternatively that's the main area we have to understand it's been a gray area and I have learned a hard lesson understanding this stuff so let's concentrate on this so we have the engine room control air supply which is usually 7 bar coming to the air supply manifold or air distribution valve unit which is indicated orange in color and after that you got to notice whenever you go on board there are two lines one is the main air which operates the diaphragm and other is the pilot air both are seven bar but that's called as pilot air for I call it as pilot air just for easy understanding since we know the air starting of the main engine or generator as main air and pilot air similarly the main air is one which operates the diaphragm and the pilot air is one which operates this spool valve or even you can call it as pilot valve. Now the main air inlet is this and here is the main air outlet or drain. 
this is pilot air inlet and the pilot air drain the main air to the diaphragms is controlled by this spool valve shuttling between the left and right and the pilot air supply to this spool valve or the main valve is controlled by this long rod we will go step by step and understand its function now at this position the left side of this diaphragm as I'm indicating here has completed its stroke or completes or completed the discharge action and the right side diaphragm has completed the suction action so the shuttle valve or the main valve opens up the main air inlet comes through this and this port is connected and this goes behind this diaphragm it's going to push it now let's watch it so air comes and then it's going to push now all right so now the air pushes it so the diaphragm moves and then this starts to discharge now let's concentrate on the air distribution unit here is the main air this main valve has created a passage or the boat the ports are connected so that it comes over here when you look at the other side this is being blocked the main air cannot pass sorry cannot pass through this main chamber to the other side of the diaphragm as the main valve is blocking it here let's watch it once again discharge and then this is sucking in you can see that the main valve shuffles between left side and right side again and again just diverting the air alternatively to either side of the diaphragm now the question is how does the shuffling happens or how does the main valve shifts from left to right and back again for that we got to understand the pilot valve over here the diaphragm is circulated or encapsulated between two plates so this plate is provided for a specific purpose the plate as it comes towards the inner end of the stroke pushes this pilot valve same happens on the other side as this pilot valve moves it covers and uncovers the pilot line alternatively let's now see it you can see the pilot thing is moving so this is how the air is alternatively supplied behind the main valve so that the air is diverted alternatively to the diaphragms on either side I will explain this concept once again so that we get it clear this is the main air inlet main air drain the pilot air inlet and the pilot air drain now the main air comes through this as this port is opened up this goes to the back side of this diaphragm and then tries to push it out the main air does not go to the other side because this is being blocked by this main valve over here now let's concentrate on the pilot side sorry before going to that as this is being pushed the air is getting trapped it has to be drained so the same passage is used for draining now we can trace this passage and you can see that this is connected to the drain of the main air so this is the main air inlet and this is main air drain so the air over here drains out that's why you get a sound when the pump is operating shuck 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 that's the reason now let's go to the pilot side so this is the pilot inlet and the pilot drain now 
the pilot valve is at central position over here now so the air goes here and then it's getting blocked it cannot go behind this main valve and operate but on the other side you can see the pilot air can go through this and then it has pushed the main valve and then it also gets filled up in the drain chamber but it cannot drain because the drain is being blocked now let's see the pilot operation let's concentrate only on the pilot as the pilot is moved by this now this has moved so there is no point that the pilot air should go and operate this piston so on the other side the pilot air goes here and then pushes this piston so that the air gets connected the main air gets connected and pushes this diaphragm out that's how it works let's see this animation So for every air inlet and outlet, we can hear two sounds, chuck, 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 chuck. So both these sounds are draining sound, one from the main air and other from the pilot air. So now once you understand this thing, you can very confidently troubleshoot if the pump is not pumping. The major critical areas are number one the valve remaining open as some sludge accumulation can happen at the valve seats it may or maybe on the discharge side or the suction side so anything may happen so usually this is the one where it, the ball gets clogged and then suction or discharge doesn't happen properly so we can remove this off and then click clear off the dirt and then put it back and one other thing is the diaphragm itself getting cracked or spoiled let's say the sludge temperature is as high as um, uh, sometimes 100 degrees if we didn't keep it at the optimum temperature for sludge transfer is around 40 to 50 70 is acceptable but there might be a problem with this kind of pump as some water in the sludge might evaporate and create a vapor lock so for that reason we maintain 50 to 60 as an optimum temperature and uh, other critical area where the problem might occur is these valves either the main valve or the pilot valve getting stuck usually if the pilot valve gets stuck you just have to tap it you just have to uh, remove this casing and then tap it and then so that the pilot valve starts to shift but this is very very rare to happen and there are chances if the air that's the control air having some moisture in it the main valve getting uh, rusted or something but usually this doesn't happen this is also a rare phenomenon on board ship we never touch this air distribution unit until and unless we suspect that this is the only problem which is happening so that's it about the Wilden pump working mechanism and there are lots of pictures which is being displayed along with this article you can see that and the credit goes to Wilden pump manufacturers for creating such a beautiful simple pump and uh, this animation has been used just for education purpose I have not created this animation and a small request from you all if you like this video there is a small thumbs up button there just click a like so that it gives me a feedback on how well I have explained this video. If you don't like, just post a comment so that I can improve upon my presentation.